Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. When it comes to men and sex, mm -hmm. women may be missing a big part of the story. Okay. On this episode of Men Are So Smart, a sex therapist shares some very surprising truths about men's desires Ooh. on the next Men Are So Smart. Tell me more. From the role of porn and the strength of libido to the importance of physical attractiveness and the desire to chase, popular culture paints a picture that doesn't always match the reality of what happens behind people's closed bedroom doors. Uh, the stereotype that we have in our society around men and sex is that men constantly are in the mood for sex and that they're always interested. Human sexuality expert Sarah Hunter Murray told Today Magazine. Truth is, men sometimes don't want to have sex. Not tonight, dear. I have a headache. We think about that as something the wife says. We don't have the same vernacular for talking about men's low sexual desire. Uh, Murray goes on to say the relationship in Winnipeg, Manitoba is, and she's the author of the same new book, not always in the mood, the new science of men, sex, and relationships. And this project was based on her interview with more than 200 heterosexual men and their sexual desires. Uh, they ranged in age from 18 to 65, and all were in long-term relationships or married. Uh, she shared some of her findings in a recent interview with Today Magazine. First up, why are men not always in the mood. As men age, their sexual desire decreases. We also find that sometimes in long-term relationships, the stress from work, taking care of kids, paying bills, takes a toll on us emotionally. This is something we talk about with women, but we don't really talk about it with men to the same degree. Yeah, men in research tell her, once I hit 40, sex stopped being so much of a priority. I just had to focus on getting a good night's sleep so I could go to work in the morning, make sure the kids got to their practices. Those pieces of life just start taking a toll on all of us, and it's natural for that to impact our interest in sex. Yeah. Uh, what struck you about the emotional needs of men's sex lives? Mm. The thing she found really fascinating was that if men felt an emotional disconnect from their partner they might not be in the mood to have sex. Ah, and you know what they say, Ronnie, use it or lose it. <laughs> Men were telling me that if they had been having a fight with their partner that hadn't been resolved, or if they just didn't feel so close and connected, even if she was interested in sex, sometimes they just wouldn't be. He just wouldn't feel sexual desire. It was dependent on feeling that emotional Closeness first. Hmm. Maybe men are turning into women. Hmm. You may not be too far off the point, buddy. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to sex, we talk about it as the quick physical activity, but we're naked, we're close to another person as we can be. It's really this emotional, vulnerable act, and it's a way for men to bring those walls down to feel that they can just be themselves. It really is this opportunity to be open, vulnerable, close, connected, and emotional. What do you want women to know about that? Well, uh, this author says, I think women can be a bit dismissive of men's advances. It's like, oh, it's just a physical act. But if we can leave a little more space for the fact that men get a lot of emotional connection, mm -hmm. care, and intimacy through sexual activity, and leave a little bit more space to say, maybe he's initiating sex because he wants to feel close. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this next topic, do men want their partners to initiate sex? Uh, and short answer is yes. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. One of the things that stood out to this author very strongly uh, throughout her research was Men want to feel desired. Yeah. Uh, they want to feel wanted by their female partner. Yes. I mean, that... It works both ways. Don't get me yeah. wrong, but this is a show for men. Uh, and it's surprising because it kind of goes against conventional wisdom. 
so used to seeing women's bodies being the object of desire, but men were really saying how important it was to feel those rules were reversed at times. Uh, they wanted to give them a compliment, flirt, seduce, or initiate sex. This was something very important to them and something they didn't necessarily feel their female partner knew. Initiating sexual activity, they said, was the ultimate, the most clear way that they felt desired. Let's let's stop right there and talk because I think this is really uh, important to learn from this particular show. Um, what happens, and we're speaking as guys with a lot of marital experience, over 30 years. Yeah. What happens in long-term relationships, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm not saying four years or six years, seven years, whatever. I'm talking about 20 plus, 25 plus years marriage. What happens is you begin to take one another for granted. And um, not to mention the fact that a lot of people will let themselves go. <laughs> I, I admit to that myself. I'm heavier than I should be. But the yep. point is that, is that okay? Well, yeah, it is if you still find the other person attractive and you got to let them know. You wonder why statistically so many men over the age of 50 are having affairs nowadays. I'm pinpointing it to that exactly, Ronald. I'm saying that one person is not doing enough of a job of letting the other person know that they still find them attractive and so eyes will wander well and you know as as a family and i'm sure that you have kind of a routine a little rut that you fall into every night when you get home from work you probably repeat the same things over and over again where uh, i know for me vicky gets home we watch a little tv we eat dinner we watch jeopardy she has to be at work the next morning she goes to bed yep it's and it's Monday through Friday, that is kind of the routine. You get into these ruts, and hey, that's the way it is. There's no, there just doesn't seem to be a time or place for you know any sexual activity in there. Mm -hmm. So it's more about your life being, you're just leaving out some of the important stuff. And getting back to this initiating sex thing, there is no higher compliment a man can be paid than his significant other suggesting that they want to have sex with you. There's no higher compliment than I'm aware of. Oh, he's a wonderful father. Yeah, that's terrific. Uh, oh, he's a great provider. Yeah, that's terrific. He's supposed to be. I want to be with him. That says a lot, ladies. Yep. Take a note from that. Your old buddy, Sweet Lou. That's coming, coming from a good source. Who? Oh, me. <laughs> right, okay. All this right. one... This one, what happens emotionally to a man if he initiates sex and his partner turns him down? Okay, this is important Ooh, too. Ooh, dang. Men indicated it was a really vulnerable act. It's the idea of, I want to feel close to you and I'm getting, uh, and I'm going to see if you say yes, you want me to. They wanted that connection. They wanted to feel seen. So when their female partners rejected sex, men felt it was as if they were. Uh, a whole person being rejected because they were getting so much more out of sex than pleasure. Yeah. they're Man, that is, it, I have to say that's never happened to me, but it would be almost like a, 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 a knife right into your heart. Uh, very, very deflating. And it's, you know, it's not, not to say that women have to say yes, always, every time you want sex, totally okay to say no, but consider doing it uh, as kind of a, in every kind of way as possible. If there's a reason that you're not in the mood, perhaps it's been a long day, help him understand that it's not him. <laughs> it's not you, it's me. <laughs> it's not him? Yeah, it's not him. It's well, That's it's, not going to work for me. Yeah. Uh, recognize that he's looking to feel close and suggest cuddling on the couch. Now, that might be, that might be a okay second. <laughs> Massage leads to pregnancy. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say right there. Yep. All right. Do men want to commit to one partner and be faithful? Well, without having read ahead in this particular paragraph, I will tell you it depends on the age of the man. If you're talking about a 25-year-old guy, 
Mm, not really. And you know why? Because he's only 25. He hasn't grown into the man that he will one day become when he's 31 or 32 years old. And he is not growing on this kind of a, he's growing this way in many different ways and shapes and becoming the person he will be. And so what I'm saying is, that's not the point where a guy is going to be pay faithful. It's not to say it doesn't happen. Right. Certainly it does. And, and more power to those people. But I'm just saying maturation plays a big role in this. The men in the relationships were saying, my partner is the one for me. I feel desire for her. They noticed an attractive person, but they said over and over again, their female partner was the object of their desire. So there's this language around caring so much about what their partner wanted. <clears throat> it wasn't about wanting all these other women's attention or that they were tempted to be with other women. There was this really strong connection and love these men were talking about in their relationships. But the author can't guarantee that these were monogamous relationships in each and every case. Uh, yeah. Is it in the blood? Well, and I can tell you, uh, in law enforcement, I law enforcement has uh, a divorce rate well over 50%. I've seen that, yeah. Uh, so I know a lot of people who are divorced. And it's, I would like to say that it's all guys with huge egos and think that they're, you know, too great for one woman. God's or, gift. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? It's not, that's true in some cases, but not in every case. Um, I'm not exactly sure how that works that... My, me and my, my buddy, we actually went through the Sheriff's Academy together. We both have married over 30 years. And, and then I have another close friend who we worked together for quite a while. Um, he's been married over, I think he got married in 93. I was his best man. So he's also got quite a, quite a string of years behind him. So it's definitely, and all these guys are, they're good cops. They are, you know... They have as much ego as every anybody else, I believe, but they're just able to separate it just enough and realize that, man, you're not just ruining, you know, your wife's life and possibly your own, but kids and you're breaking apart families, families, in-laws and everybody. Your parents aren't thrilled either. No, no, nobody is. Divorce is just one of those things where there are no real winners. Yeah. You're, and your parents, you know, they just want the best for you and. God forbid there was some sort of uh, shenanigans that went on. Yep. You know, it, it makes them a little less proud. Let's put it that way. Yep. All right. Um, how important is physical appearance to men, Ron? You know what? I mean, I think it plays a, a big role. We're visual. Yeah, we are very visual. Uh, men said they like lingerie, a low-cut shirt, or skirt line. But the thing that they highlighted most without fail was the, that only it only matters so much. So it's not everything. Well, I will tell you this. <laughs> when you marry a woman at the age of 30 and she has an incredible figure, uh, but she's not real bright. <laughs> <laughs> By the time that she gets to be 65, she's probably not going to have that really great body. Right. And she's still not going to be very smart. Then where are you going to be? She's not going to be any smarter than she was. All right. There you go. Yeah. That's and, pretty pretty simple math. And I really think that, yeah, you have to... You have to connect on more than just a visual level. There's a, you know, there's a lot of emotion involved with it. I think, I feel like sometimes my wife and I are the same person. We have so many v like views uh, on a lot of things. We can watch the same video and I can look over at her and she can look over at me and we're both, you know, doing this a little bit. Right. Uh, it really is. It's unusual. And maybe that's just because of all the time we've spent together so many years. You just start to share a brain at some point. Yeah. but Finish yeah. each other's sentences. Yes. But there is more to it than just looks. I think initially the looks are what gets you interested in somebody, but then there's way more to it beyond that. What do you want women to know about men and porn? Here we go. Hmm. Men, in the author's research described porn as something that was very peripheral to their sexual experiences. Most acknowledged they watched from time to time, say, 
when there was a longer time between sexual activity and or when they had a higher desire than their partner as a way to help bridge the gaps. It was something that scratched an itch or provided entertainment, but it was always talked about as a supplement to the primary desire, which was to have a sexual or intimate encounter with his wife. Um, boy, what a controversial topic, Ronnie. Porn. Yeah. It's... Um, is it a necessary evil? You know what? To some. Yeah. Um, and, and you know what? Uh, a generalization would be to say that all men love porn. I don't think that's true. I don't think so. But I will tell you this, though. Some women enjoy it. Yeah. And you know what else? The reason why there's like 35,000 different selections it's because there are th at least 35,000 different kinds of fetishes. Right. And, uh, gee, I like this, or I like that, or I like bath towels. <laughs> Grannies and trannies. Okay, there you go. <laughs> um, bath towels. That shows you how much I know. Uh, anyway, yes, it, it is, uh, I believe, a necessary evil. Um, they talk about victims, uh, women being victims in the porn industry. Um uh, you don't hear a lot about that. Um, they're making money. Yeah. And they make the decision to put the battery charge in the camera. Yeah. I mean, it's it's certainly possible. And certainly uh, human trafficking, we were talking earlier about a human trafficking issue. Uh, I think in, by and large, in uh, the porn industry, the the regulated porn industry, I don't think it's an issue. And there's... But there's a lot of backroom porn being sure. filmed also, mm -hmm. and that's probably where you would find that. You wouldn't find it on any mainstream porn site. Um, I, th I think people would be shocked if <laughs> there were to be something like that. You know, and kind of along the same lines as a snuff video right. or something. That's going to be a, a very, very small segment and something that probably... A lot of guys just wouldn't be into. I don't know. And my my feeling is, you aren't just going to stumble onto that, okay? No, you're. If you're watching that, there's a reason. You've yeah. actively searched it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, what have we learned today about men, women, and sex? Well, I can tell you that the thing that I picked up most from this article <clears throat> was that um, women, if they would like to continue having a successful relationship, should. Uh, do whatever they can in their power to initiate sex on occasion. Something as small as that, even if it's got a quickie, <laughs> uh, it's going to do wonders for your man. And, you know, they say that, well, you know, maybe if he'd do the dishes, I'd have sex with him more. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe if you had sex with him more, he might do the dishes. Yeah, you never know. That's one way of looking at it. Try it. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I learned. And um, porn is, is not, it's really not evil. It's all in about how you use it or if you use it at all. If you choose not to, again, more power to you. Yeah. Uh, if you find yourself doing it uh, and you're late for work or you'd call in sick for a whole day work, then it might be an issue. Yeah. If you're doing it in lieu of having sex with your significant other, right. that could be a problem too. It's like any other addiction. Mm -hmm. If it starts to control your life, yeah. then that's something to be concerned about. All right. Well, from time to time, we'd like to talk about health, men's health, and um, what's going on in the world, the differences between men and women. And that's what we've done here today. We hope that you have enjoyed the show. If you did, please give it a like. Also, subscribe to our channel. And when you do, click the bell. Uh, that way you'll get notifications each and every time a new show comes out, which are on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays when I feel like it. <laughs> or <laughs> 9 Pacific. Uh, yeah. Okay, that too. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Thanks for watching our show today. This has been Men Are So Smart.